All right, y'all. Uh, we made it to Duluth this afternoon. Stopped by the convention center to pick up the race packet. Um, things are definitely in full swing here. Uh, it was super busy and super backed up, but we got everything we need. Um, so we got to the hotel, stretched out a bit, and then I just ran a quick, quick jog to loosen up the legs, test out the shoes, um, and kind of do all that to get in preparation or to prepare for tomorrow. So. Um, we got a quick jog in and then we're going to stretch out, roll out, and then eat some dinner and get ready for tomorrow. So, um, nothing too much going on, but prepping for tomorrow, we're going to go to bed early because we got to be up around, I don't know, 5 o'clock probably. So, going to be an early one, but um, we're excited for tomorrow and uh, hopefully ready to go. Night before everybody, wish me luck. What's up y'all? Um, uh, I'm recording this video the day after uh, the marathon. Um, I just wanted to do kind of one final video in this series here to kind of recap the day yesterday um, and just kind of walk through how the day went, um, kind of what I did and how how it all shook out at the end. So uh, we'll kind of we'll kind of start from square one but I mean as you can see from my shirt it says finisher so I, I finished spoiler um, but kind of starting the day we we ended up getting a hotel in Duluth for Friday night so that Saturday morning I could wake up and just be ready to go as ready as possible because it was already gonna be an early morning anyways but so we did that I uh, Friday night I had some light pasta I had some sweet potatoes and some chicken um, I had been carb loading for the previous four days, and so the thought behind it was carb load the four days before, and then the night of the marathon, eat something easy on your stomach so that you don't feel too heavy or your stomach doesn't feel too um, out of whack the next morning when it's really important. So that was kind of the idea behind it. Um, so that's what I ended up eating. Uh, went to bed pretty early, woke up around 5 o'clock. Um, the race was at 7.45, so I wanted to give myself, A, enough time to actually eat breakfast, but for my food to also settle. Um, so that was that was the thought process there. I had kind of my normal breakfast, but a little bit heavier. I had my overnight oats, you know, kind of the same thing I've been doing this whole time. I also had a banana and like half of a peanut butter bagel. Um, so I was trying to get a little bit more in than I normally would since I'd be doing 26 versus just my normal training runs. So I ate all that, had a little coffee, uh, kind of had my morning routine there and then um, got my stuff together and then Aaron was driving me to the bus stop um, where I would then be shuttled to Two Harbors which is the start of the race. It goes from Two Harbors or just south of it to Duluth. It's pretty much a straight shot. But so Aaron and I get our stuff, we walk outside and we look at our car and our, our tire is extremely flat. And at this point I'm kind of tweaking because I only have 15 minutes until I need to be at the bus because the bus only runs for so long. Um, and so I'm like, crap. So we run back in and we had a couple friends come with us and thankfully they had a car and I had to wake them up at like, I don't know, at that point it was six in the morning. We'd be like, hey, can we please, please use your car because ours has a flat and it's extremely flat. So they were nice enough to lend us their car for that. So we quick hustled out. She drove me to the bus stop. I got on the bus and drove the 45 minutes to Two Harbors. And then we got there. It was a nice sunny morning. Um, it was about 50 degrees northeast wind I believe it was um, so I, I mean it was it was the perfect perfect weather for a marathon in, in my opinion um, so I was I was ready to start the day my stomach was feeling good my legs were feeling loose and ready um, I felt like all the preparation and thought behind the food the stretching the taper and the different things that I did were kind of coming into into focus and really um, showing their effect in a positive way. So 
I got all my stuff together, shoes were tied, clothes was ready, um, had my headphones ready, and I kind of meandered my way towards the, the starting line probably around 7.30, so I probably had about 15 minutes, but I wanted to kind of get in my little spot. Um, so during these races, they normally have a pacer um, or a number of pacers, but essentially what that is is just someone who carries this little sign um, with them as they run, which is kind of a crazy thought to me. But they carry a sign that basically says what pace they're running at. So if you have a desired finish or you're trying to reach a certain goal, you can kind of find one of these pacers stick with them um, and use that as a motivation or a reference point to reaching that goal. Um, so when I got to the starting line, I saw 650 pace, which would have been to qualify for grandmas. And then I saw, I believe it was seven and 710. So I kind of sat in between the seven and 710 because that's realistically where I thought I would end up. I was just trying to finish around the seven minute average mark for this marathon. Um, because, I don't know, that's what I had been training for. Um, I, I didn't necessarily anticipate or really try to qualify or think I was going to qualify, so I was just kind of hovering around that little over seven mark. Um, then we sung the national, or not sung, but the national anthem was played, we got ready to run, and, and the gun went off, and we started moving. Um, and as we started going, uh, my legs were feeling good. I was just kind of keeping up with the crowd for probably the first mile and then just keeping that about seven minute pace. And then well, after about the first mile and the crowd started to break up and things started to open a little bit, um, I, I don't know. I think I just started to run a little bit faster and it just felt like a nice steady pace that I could keep for a while. And I don't know if it was just the adrenaline of starting the race or just the excitement of it all, but I started going and I had my Nike running app going while I was while I was racing just so that I could keep uh, every mile it updates you on your time, your miles, and your average pace. And so I just did that so that I could have a general idea of where I was at each mile I hit so I, I knew whether I needed to speed up or slow down or, you know, whatever. And so after about the first mile, I think it was like seven something. And then I started to speed up, not super intentionally, but I was just running a little quicker. And then it told me my average was like 640 per mile. And I was like, holy crap, that's, that's way quicker than I ever trained. I think the fastest I ever trained was 659. Um, so I was, I was slightly confused, but the pace I was running just felt really good. Um, and so I just, I just kept on trying to keep steady at that pace. And... For the next few miles, it kept saying 640, 640, and I was like, man, I don't know what's gotten into me, but this feels good, and we're just going to keep on riding it out. And so I eventually passed, I come up on the, the 650 pacer, and there's a kind of a big clump of people that are running with them. And so I run with them for a little bit, and I'm like, man, this is, this is feeling good. And I, my body was feeling... I don't know, feeling good, I just said that, but I was feeling good, and as I hit that 650 pacer, I wanted to go a little bit quicker, and my pace was 640, so I was naturally going a little faster anyway, so I'm like, okay. So we go past them, and we just keep on with that 640 pace, and I don't know what got into me, but I just kept chugging, and it, it felt really good, and so I just kept moving at 640, got through 10 miles, was feeling really good, um, still at that 640 pace the entire time. And then around mile 11, I took my first gel packet um, or gel shot or whatever you want to call them. Drank a little bit of water, kept on moving at that pace. Um, as I was going, there was a number of guys that I kind of stuck with for a little bit or people that I stuck with um, that were kind of running a similar pace. But eventually either I would pull forward or they would pull forward and then I'd find someone new to kind of keep pace with. But Kept going, and then we get to mile 12, uh, saw my mom and her husband. Um, that was nice to have some fans there. Um, just kind of keeps you going, keeps you motivated. And so I keep moving, and 
I come up to mile 15, still got the 640 pace somehow. I'm thinking in my head at this point, like, I might, I might have a chance to, to qualify here even though that wasn't my intention necessarily at the start, but with the time I had and how I was feeling, I'm like, I could maybe do this. And so I see one of my buddies, takes a couple photos of me, and then we keep on moving. Um, and I told Aaron, I was like, hey, if you wouldn't mind being at mile 18, um, that's when I think I would want my second and final Jill shot. And so I was kind of looking, didn't see him, didn't see him, and I'm like, oh crap, did I, did I pass him already? I I don't know, I was like, I didn't see him, so I thought maybe I missed him. So I keep going, and I get to about mile 20, and that's that's when the wall hits. Um, if you ever talked with anyone who runs marathons, a lot of times people will hit walls. In each of my three marathons, I've hit the wall around 20 or 21, and that's unfortunately exactly when it happened again this time. Um, but I, I hit that wall, and I was like, ah, oh, crap, this is, this is not good. So I had to stop and walk for a little bit, catch my breath, grab some water, and then start running again and kind of do it again. And I just, I don't know, I was frustrated because I knew I hit that wall, but I knew I was ahead of the pace I needed to be to qualify. But I'm like, if I keep walking, I'm, I'm not gonna get it. But I was so tired that it was this, this fight within me of <laughs> what to do. So I was trying to just keep moving the best I can, take minimal walks and just keep pushing the best I can. And then I get to mile 21 right before the big hill. Um, and then I see Aaron and I'm like, oh, thank goodness. So I suck down my last gel shot, take a little Gatorade. And then I see Aaron, um, her mom, our friends who were there to support me as well. Big shout out to them. Um, that was huge. And nice to just have people there cheering me on. And so I get to 21, I suck that down and then I keep rolling. We get up past the hill. Um, and I have to pause and walk for a sec, but I just, I just know we're so close. So I'm <laughs> just trying to carry on, even though my body's like yelling at me and I have almost nothing left. Um, and so we finally get to the last couple miles. I think it was like mile 23 and it's slightly downhill and there starts to be a lot of people cheering you on because you're in the city of Duluth. Um, that's where the excitement is. So there's a lot of people. So it was kind of extra motivation to not stop because you don't want to, I don't know, <laughs> I don't want to be the guy walking, but I think I did walk one more time, but we get to mile 24 and we're, we're getting close. And I know we have two miles and it's, I'm pushing the limit here because I was walking and I can hear in my ear these last couple miles, my average going up. It went from 640 pace to like 642, 644, 647. And I knew I had to keep it pretty close to below that 650 mark um, because that's generally um, the pace you wanna have if you're trying to qualify. So I'm like, I, I have to keep it below. Like you made it this far, you were running so fast and this is, this is the opportunity. Um, like everything just lined up so well and I was feeling so good that day that I'm like, you have to, don't let this opportunity slip. And so I was at 24 and I'm like, okay, we're gonna keep on pushing. We're gonna try to work through this, even though it sucks and I'm exhausted and I don't have anything left, we're gonna, we're gonna push hard. So I keep moving and I see my mom at 25 and she's like cheering me on, yelling, and she's like, you gotta, <laughs> like, you gotta move. Like this last mile, you gotta go. And so I'm like, okay, here we go. Um, but to take a step back, when I hit mile 24, I saw a time clock for the race that said two hours, 44 minutes, and a few seconds. So in my head, I'm doing some math. I'm like, I have 2.2 miles left. And if I'm running a seven pace, because I was running a little slower at the time because I was so tired, that's 14 minutes plus, we'll call it two minutes for the remainder 0.2 miles. So that's 16 minutes, almost exactly to that three hour mark. So I'm like, oh boy. So I keep pushing. I see my mom and she tells me the same thing. So I'm like, okay, this last mile, 1.2, I have to kick it into gear and give it everything I have. So I'm running. And at this point, we, almost the entire race, I was coming south, but it kind of comes south. And once you hit mile 24, it loops around the, the hockey arena and the convention center. 
as you get close to um, close to the bridge. But it kind of loops around. You go around the building. You cut back, and you make like almost a circle, and then start heading directly east as you finish. Um, and that was right into the wind. So this last little mile and a half, it was into the wind, which really sucked. And thankfully, I didn't have that the whole race. But right when I was tired, I was dealing with that as well. So I was pushing this last mile and a half into the wind and I, my body was freaking out. I'm like, dude, you are so tired. Everything in my mind is telling me to stop, but I'm like, I, I have to keep moving. So I just will myself forward and, and know that if I can push hard, I might have a chance at qualifying, even though it's going to be close. So I'm making my way. I turn the corner to get into the final stretch and there's 0.2 left and I'm like, okay, this is it. We have to push hard. So I get there and we get to the final, we'll call it 0.1 or so miles. And I start, I'm like, okay, you need to give it every single ounce you have left. So I start running as fast as my exhausted body could, um, sprinting, <laughs> even though I could probably sprint much faster on a normal day, but all things considered, I start sprinting as fast as I could. And I look at the clock on the finish line and it's like two hours, 59 minutes and change. So I'm like, oh crap, I have to go. And I just push as hard as and hard as I could. And I'm going and I'm going and I cross the finish line. And the time says three hours, zero minutes, four seconds. And I'm like, did I, did I do it? I don't know because I know when I started, timer starts when the gun goes off and the first people go but i was at least 10 seconds after the whistle or after the gun and so i'm like i wonder what my official time was i think i did it but i i don't know i'm nervous because the clock said three hours and four seconds so i finish i get my uh, aluminum foil blanket thing to keep myself warm i get a water and i'm kind of hobbling around because my legs are shot and I uh, kind of go, I see one of my friends, say hi to him, give him a high five, you know, whatever. And then I finally see uh, Aaron and we look and we looked at the final time, the official time. And uh, it said two hours, 59 minutes and 44 seconds. So I qualified. I, I, I qualified for Boston Marathon. I, I could not believe it. I was in tears. Aaron was in tears. It was just a, a rather emotional moment um, for us all because it's just been the culmination of a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of time, um, get, battling through injuries. Um, I mean, it was, it was just a lot of work, and I didn't think I would get to this point at that race, but I was ecstatic. I did. Um, I think just the emotion of it and all of the work that went into it just kind of came out and, and came out in the form of tears, but they were happy tears. Um, kind of chokes me up thinking about it, but we were celebrating, we were excited. And just the fact that, that I, <laughs> that I did it, I, I could not believe it. So I ended up running a two hour, 59 minute and 44 second marathon qualifying for Boston just by 16 seconds um, and I think my pace was 652 I think was the official average um, which is the fastest race I've run I think ever to be really honest I haven't run a half marathon that fast so I was beyond shook that I had I had ran a marathon that fast but I was I I could not believe it I was so excited and um, all my family and friends were giving me hugs and were excited for me. And it was, it was just such a cool moment, um, not only to accomplish it, but just to have so many family and friends um, who are close to me be there to celebrate. Uh, it, it truly meant the world to me. Um, it, it was just such a special moment. Um, and kind of thinking back to this whole training process and you know, the 18 weeks and the videos we made and just reflecting on the process, it, it it's just cool to see all the work come together at the time you hope it does and really just come to fruition and 
allow me to accomplish the goals that I had, had wanted to, and then some. Um, I, I just truly could not believe it. I, that was, I did not expect to qualify, and I, we did. It, so it was, it was a wonderful experience. It was the perfect day. The weather was perfect, wind at my back, cool weather. Um, my body felt fantastic. Um, just running, I felt really good. My hamstring didn't flare up today. Um, my knees felt good, my ankles felt good. Just everything, everything lined up perfectly yesterday at the right moment, and it allowed me to, to qualify. I thank God for it. I think he was, he was pushing me along the whole time. Um, I just, I, I, I don't know. It was just such an incredible experience and I can't believe that I, I qualified. So that's, uh, that was how it went. Uh, that was how race day went and we, we qualified. So we're going to apply to Boston here in September and hopefully the cutoff is right so that I can run Boston. Um, and that would be for April, 2023, if they let me in. So fingers crossed, uh, that's where we're kind of at with that one. And, uh, yeah, we're going to look forward to that. But since then, I've kind of been hobbling around, trying to roll out each day and take care of my legs. But, I mean, they are just sore in every way possible, um, as I kind of assumed would happen. But, I mean, it just, <laughs> it hurts. I feel like I have absolute sticks for legs, and at any moment I could just fall over. <laughs> um but no, it's, it's, it's a good sore, but I'm just trying to make sure that I roll out and do all the things I normally do so that my legs can recover. And um, I'm definitely gonna give them time to do that and probably take about a week off of running. Just let them bounce back and, and recoup because I put them through a lot yesterday. So that's kinda, kinda where we're at with this, but um, yeah, I, I don't really have too much else. That's, that's it. We're through 18 weeks of training, through the marathon and, and post-marathon. So, I don't know. It's, it's been fun. I'm extremely excited and thrilled that I qualified, that I finished the marathon, that I beat my 310 goal, um, and just, just all the things. It, it's been such an amazing process, and I'm so thankful for my wife who had supported me through all this and our families and our friends who have encouraged me along the way. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do it without them all. So big thank you to, to you guys. Thank you for all of you who watched the vlog. Um, I know it was a bit dry at times, but I enjoyed doing it. Um, and it was kind of cool to, to take a moment to reflect each week and um, see the process along the way. So thank you to all of you who watched. Uh, thank you for making this such a special marathon and, and leading up to it, making it so special. Um, I can't thank you all enough. So for the last time, uh, I'll be signing off, but thank you for watching. Um, and thank you for keeping in tune and, and watching me through this process and, and through the marathon. I couldn't, couldn't be more appreciative. All right, y'all. Peace.